And um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the session. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session, which is Tesudo, an open source assessment platform, and will be presented by John Haddad and Jim Stanley. John is a product manager for the California Community College Technology Center. John has over 20 years of software development experience and 10 years specifically within higher education technology. During his tenure with the California Community College Tech Center, John led the product development efforts for a statewide tool designed to support incoming students with accurate English and math placements. Those development efforts have resulted in a versatile and interoperable platform that is designed to support colleges and students, not only in the onboarding process, but throughout their academic career. James Stanley is a senior Java developer at Unicon Incorporated, the leading provider of education technology, consulting, and digital services. James is a 30-year veteran of software development with a strong focus on client-driven, customer-focused applications, emphasizing high performance and clean design. With eight years specifically in the education domain and 20 years in development of a wide range of complex scientific applications, James offers a unique range of computational and process experience that has produced industry leading applications in a diverse set of fields from electron diffraction analysis to student success and assessment. Please note everyone that you're probably muted when you came in. You will have to unmute yourself if you want to ask questions. And you can ask questions anytime in the chat. I will be watching that um, and bringing those to John and Jim. Um, this session is being recorded. And just be aware that it will be posted on the uh, Perio YouTube channel as usual with uh, Open to Perio, and we are open. Um, and please welcome John Haddad and Jim Stanley to present to Sudo, an open source assessment platform. Thank you so much, Julie. Uh, it's really, it's real, a pl real pleasure to be here um, this year again to talk a little bit about Tesudo. Um, I think last year we hadn't, uh, we, I think we were just calling it Open Project X, the open assessment, uh, an open assessment tool. So we're excited to, uh, to, to show some, a few of the updates that we've made over the, pa the past year. Um, and, uh, and, and talk a little bit about what the opportunities are, where we're looking, we're looking for partners. Um, our, our primary goal right now is looking for, for incubation partners. And so we're, we're extremely interested in having an opportunity to, uh, to explore what might be available and what interest there might be out in, out in, the, in the world to, uh, to make the best of, uh, of what we've got here from Mexico. I am going to jump here in here into Okay, so I will skip over that. Thank you for the introduction, Shirley. Um, the background and all of this stuff. So, so in 2011, the, the California legislature introduced, in, the California Assembly introduced legislature that required that all of the California community colleges, that at that point, I believe there were 112, were now up to 115. Uh, community colleges in the in the state of California, along with um, our, our Calbright, which is, which is the uh, the virtual um, excuse me online uh, community college in California, and uh, so that was introduced as a, as a means. What was 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 being observed throughout the state was that there was a lot of unnecessary remediation that was resulting from a rather diverse set of tools that was being used throughout the state. Um, at that point, there were about 30 different assessment instruments that were being utilized. <clears throat> and there were, you know, we were, they were seeing notable, notable differences in the way students were being assessed if the student was having to take assessments at multiple colleges because they were applying to multiple colleges at the same time. They were getting different types of placements which resulted in some shopping around by students um, to try and get the best placement. Um, but for some students that, you know, they were, there's only one college in the area. So they were, they were, they were forced to, to take the, the placements at the college that they had applied to. And in a lot of ways, it was resulting in a lot of unnecessary remediation. And <clears throat> that, of course, that unnecessary remediation, of course, was costing, you know, students a significant amount of money and, of course, time. Um, Spent in classes that uh, that were not necessary, not necessarily needed. 
to, uh, to be able to, to successfully get through transfer level English and math. And so we, we started out, uh, the direction was to build a common assessment um, instrument that would be utilized throughout the state. The, the legislature covered the development of both content as well <clears throat> as a delivery platform. And uh, there were, there were you know, three primary, you know, three primary um, placements that we were generating from that. So we were providing English placements, English as a second language placements for English lang language learners, and of course, math placements as well. Um, the whole goal of it was to really help inform curricular development and be able to address the specific needs that we, that we realized and that we were able to ascertain for cohorts of students provide, based on the data that was being provided by, common, by the common assessment tool. And so um, <clears throat> as kind of going through the, the, the early stages after the legislature was passed, it was a bit before my time of joining the, the, the tech center I hadn't joined, uh, I didn't join until 2015. So there were a couple of years from when the legislature with legislation was passed to <clears throat> when they actually started pulling, pulling together the groups um, that were going to help lay the foundation for, for building out the tool. And so the, uh, the, what the, the goal of that initial group was to align to the, the K-12 Common Core Standards. And when, we, when they were evaluating the delivery tools that were going to be available, they considered, we did consider off the self shelf solutions, but ultimately we ended up going uh, and awarding, um, awarding the, 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 the contracts to Unicon. Um, they presented a compelling case for, for building the, the platform from the ground up for ourselves. And so that was the, the route that we went. Um, what came out of that uh, was, a, was a rather revolutionary assessment system that was adapted at a test, uh, adapted at the test level, allows for us, the test, to adjust to the student's performance within the assessment and address and help identify um, any type of, of, uh, of competency weaknesses based on the information that was being provided. One of the nice things that was, that was great about the common assessment tool and about Tesudo is that it provides the ability, it does provide um, information about what the student does know. So rather than, rather than primarily focusing on those weaknesses, we allow, the, the, the platform allowed us to identify what strengths and skills the student does have and then develop a plan that was custom tailored to them and their cohort, a cohort of students to allow them to continue to develop their, their skills. And so we were able to arrive at that information without having to deliver a very, very long diagnostic assessment, um, but rather minimize, uh, minimize testing fatigue by administering a small number of questions and being able to ascertain um, their, their level and their competency, uh, their skill competency at uh, with just a, a small number of questions. And um, of course, that aligns to the new vision for student success, where you know, the, the, um, when we talk about guided pathways and being able to help the student navigate not only through the onboarding process, but then through the rest of their, their college career, that was the, the goal of the assessment platform. Two years ago, or within the last couple of, last few years actually, there became an interest that we've certainly seen where we started to move away from high stakes, high stakes assessments and really start to, um, start looking at different information that would allow us to predict um, the likelihood of success based on other information. And uh, so what we've certainly seen within the California Community College system is the moving away from assessment tests specifically for English and for math. Um, ESL is, uh, is a little bit of a different beast where the, the, the ESL groups in California are still determining whether or not an assessment is going to be necessary to accurately place and assess their, their needs. Um, assess skills and needs. Um, but what we see is there's certainly, um, even, even though they were moving a lot of way, moving away from the high stakes assessments to determine placement, we still see a lot of demand for testing and feedback. Um, and that's an opportunity, there's an opportunity for platforms like Tesudo, especially when we start looking at the certain lot of, a lot of buzzwords these today about competency-based learning, outcomes-based assessment, and being able to track student success we know that there is a lot of move away, a move towards understanding a student's co college readiness, um, being able to understand and assess performance and understanding more than in, in wanting to understand who the student is and get a, a much more accurate, pic uh, a holistic picture of who the student is um, beyond just their ability um, 
to perform inside of math and, and, and math and English. Of course, this year has been a, an, an extraordinary year um, on so many different levels. And of course, with the, the COVID-19 crisis that has, uh, has swept the globe, uh, we certainly see that there is a lot, of move, a lot of demand for more online tools and resources. And so from that perspective, we do believe that, uh, that Jesudo can play a, a key role in that. When we started building this, since we, were, since we were not taking an off-the-shelf solution and having to customize that, what we, that provided the opportunity for us to really build the platform from the ground up. And so when we, when we started coming into this, we really worked closely with members of the Assessments Association throughout the California Community College System to really understand what were the most desirable, um, most desirable features that, uh, that we would build into the platform. And so rather than tweaking something that is off the shelf, we got to build this from the ground up. And so that really provided us a, an opportunity, knowing that what we needed to build had to be a cloud-based solution. It had to be scalable to be able to administer millions of tests um, with understanding that there are peaks and valleys in the assessment cycle and in the testing cycles. We wanted to, to, it to be a, a, adaptive and make sure that it, un, that, um, that it adjusts to the student's ability as they go through the assessment. Of course, being an integrated solution, we wanted to make sure that it, it integrated with existing tools um, and, and applications that were being utilized throughout the system and being able to transmit the, the information over to the SIS, as well as being allowing for customized branding and the long-term vision of moving away from, from a, a purely assessment tool to having the ability to, to use this as a general tool that could be used in multiple applications and contexts uh, and in being able to administer tests. One nice thing about building it from the ground up is that every step of the development process, we infused accessibility um, and security into the, into the development um, cycle. Every, uh, every release had an accessibility and security review that ensured that uh, all students were, would be able to use the platform as well as ensuring that with the amount of money that's being invested in the content, uh, specifically the content, that the, the platform was, uh, was as secure as possible. We do know that there are populations within the, the, the state um, and throughout the globe, obviously, that, uh, that don't necessarily have access to, uh, have access to the internet. And so the, the need to be able to, to produce and administer paper-based assessments was also uh, within scope for our minimum viable product. And, uh, and of course, we, we built in the ability to, to consider and evaluate uh, high school transcript data because that was part of the, uh, of the legislation in California was that, uh, that the placements had to be based on multiple measures. And so we built support for multiple measures directly into the platform. So the content started in 2014 large groups of faculty came together, uh, I, it, it insurmountable uh, odds against, uh, against that. Of course, there was a lot of skepticism whether we'd be able to ever actually get uh, faculty to, to agree on, on a common assessment tool. But under the leadership um, that we had within our tech center, uh, we, had a, we, had, we, we brought faculty together from, from throughout and saw the highest level of collaboration probably with faculty not only within each campus, but across the whole system to be able to develop the content. Um, and we leveraged the actual, we actually leveraged the platform for testing out the content um, as an item piloting to be able to calibrate the items, remove any items or tweak items that we, that we realized there were some disproportionate impact or that there, and, and address any kind of, um, uh, I forget what the word is, forgive me, but ma making sure that the items were, were neutral um, and, and, able, and, and not uh, any kind of, didn't, didn't, didn't demonstrate any kind of bias. Um, unfortunately, the content is not part of the open source offering, as you can all imagine. Um, it's an expensive undertaking, and I, I know that the, I think that the state of California anticipates that at some time we might be able to use some of that. I came on in 2015 as, uh, as the product manager. At that point, the, the Unicon team has uh, had already been um, working on on some on the basics of getting the the platform starting together. We st it started in, in early 2015. 
Unicon um, proved to be a really incredible development partner. Unicon is, is based is based in uh, in Arizona, and I actually happen to be uh, Arizona based as well. So I had the opportunity to to be on site with them on a regular basis, and and just enjoyed a really really strong collaborative partnership with them uh, in developing and making sure that we understood. You know, evaluating the information and the feedback that we were getting from the field and being able to prioritize our requirements to 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 really pull together what we what we think is a as a really a really viable and robust, robust product. So jumping into kind of some key functionality here, um, and trying to be mindful of time, um, we've got uh, you know controlled access, making sure that that uh, that we have as, as secure as possible. We supported a limited number of interaction types for the initial um, the initial launch of the the Tsudo platform, and that was primarily driven by by accessibility. Uh, the more complex interactions require a significant uh, uh, level of, uh, of development to make those in interactions accessible. And so we started out with some of the more basic types of interaction types. Um, the assessment can be linear or nonlinear, so it can, we have a lot of controls in terms of how the, the student navigates and moves from, a, from testlet to testlet. We, support, uh, we have support for MathML and uh, we have the ability to control navigation and again, um, paper assessment. We have proctoring functionality. So we, we do allow for um, proctors to, to be able to activate to support remote proctoring. So students who were out of state from California, they could be sent to a, a, a partnering test site and we could uh, allow for the remote proctoring to be able to allow students who were out of state and couldn't get to a, a community college in California to, to test those. And um, again, because of the, because of the, 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 the nature of, of the assessments, we wanted to make sure that uh, controls were in place that would prevent any uncontrolled access to, to the platform. From an administrative functionality perspective, we, we have the ability for, for previewing items as they are, as they're, after, they're being, after they are imported into the platform. We built out a robust user management um, module to allow for, to control and, and build roles and permissions based, uh, roles that are permissions based, as well as being able to control multiple test center locations, as well as the, as the placement model management. From a reporting perspective, um, we have multiple multiple reports that allow us to to, to share information with students and um, and and faculty, both counseling faculty and instructional faculty, to allow to provide some ins insight and help not only coach and provide some guidance to an individual student from a counseling faculty perspective, but being able to understand where the skills exist uh, and the needs and the opportunities for helping students from a, a, a cohort perspective as well. Okay, to pseudo in action. So, oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna switch over here really quick to a, uh, to a demo. And so this is the this is the proctoring dashboard. Jim's gonna show us a screenshot that shows what it looks like update with the updated branding to, 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 for Tesudo. Um, we are walking through here, what we're walking through here is is the activation of, uh, of an assessment for so we're looking up students. We can see that this student currently doesn't have any active as, uh, of assessments. Uh, or I'm sorry, we see it one active assessment that the student is uh, is ready to take. When we go to activate an, uh, another assessment of the same type, we, we have controls in place that say, hey, hold on a second, this student already has um, an assessment that is activated for this. Do you want to keep that existing one or do you want to replace it with a new assessment for the students to, to take? The, on that last screen that we did show, we, we are tracking um, from a reporting, reporting purposes any accommodations that, uh, that have been provided to the student. Um, we don't, uh, we don't, that doesn't drive the, the way that the, the system behaves, but it's more for, for reporting, uh, reporting purposes. So we see that the, um, 
that the student here has now, we've, we've activated that. We're capturing the passcode. This is inside of the proctor. The proctor, the proctor accesses um, the passcode for this specific active, for this specific uh, assessment and then provides it to the student. So when the student logs in here, um, they're gonna navigate to their, their dashboard. They can see that they have an assessment that is active. They'll launch the, the assessment here. They're gonna enter the passcode. And after, after a blunder, of, oh, so we have, we have the ability to, to have instructions, both from a general perspective where we can add instructions that are, that are part of the, uh, the assessment platform, as well as assessment specific um, instructions as well. So we have the ability to have instructions that are specific to the math assessment versus the English language art test. I had a pop-up block right here, so, <laughs> so this is the, so this is a long, just, just give this an, an idea of, this is of the interaction types. Um, we work with a UX expert to, to, to help create a very user-friendly interface for students that, uh, that didn't add any type of unnecessary, undo, unnecessary duress or stress <clears throat> into the assessing experience. This was a, this is a, uh, a multi-select interaction type. This is a, a short, short answer. Drop down, <clears throat> selecting. All of that feedback is also, uh, it, you can, you have control over that, so. Whether or not you're you're letting the person uh, know that they they didn't quite complete the test or whatever, so it's all all that's configurable right. per per item. We do have a uh, we we do have a, a built-in calculator into the platform, and we at the at a question level we can um, we can turn on or turn off access to to the calculator as well. There's the calculator. So you can see we just transitioned from a, from a question that allowed the calculator to a question that didn't and the, 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 the question, the calculator automatically did. And so this is a, a longer, a longer response uh, interaction type. Okay. Now the student has completed their assessment. We, we track the time that they were on the assessment. Once the assessment is completed, then we have the ability to provide information both to the student as well as to um, the faculty, uh, to, to the assessment staff, uh, counseling faculty, any instructional faculty as well. So we, we're looking back at the student and we can see that they've completed that and then now allow us to, sh to see the results of the, of the assessment.
as well as any of the, the activities that uh, we do have the ability to, to, to see the log when the student started, when they completed, you can see if they paused and if they, re, if they resumed. And so this information helps us identify where from a metric perspective, perspective the student measures in terms of the skills and competencies that, that we believe that they do have or most likely have, have um, developed as well as skills the skills and, and, uh, and competencies that they should be working on next to, to continue moving their, um, their level of skill. And so th this breaks things down into more specific uh, groupings. And since this was a, since this was a, uh, a sample test, we didn't necessarily have, have tests associated to all of within, the, uh, uh, sorry, items associated to all of these groupings. So that's why we see there's that there is no score for some, no measure for some of these. And that's the reason why that, that looks like that. From a placement perspective, these are the, these are the specific, uh, if you, for, for seeing when we have a specific course information, call it, you know, your, your institution can update and provide information that, that gives very prescriptive, here's the course this, that, that you should, to, should enroll in and, uh, and help guide the student on, that, on those next steps in the process. Okay. So I'm going to hand it over to Jim really quick to, uh, to run through some information. Jim, do you want to go ahead and share your screen? You're muted, Jim. Telling myself, telling myself I was on mute. All right. So, so first of all, I wanted to, uh, we wanted to show that actually it's up and running. That you can get it to run on your local environment. This is on my machine. Uh, it's fairly, uh, you know, reasonably responsive. It's a little slower than what you saw on the screen, I think, uh, overall. But uh, you do get to see that um, it's working. This is. Uh, we did a very minimal amount of uh, customization for Tesudo, but uh, all the namespaces have been changed in the code itself uh, so that it's Tesudo uh, uh, focused. And um, I wanted to spend a, just a few minutes going over the actual code base. So if you, if you actually get excited, and I, I hope you do, I think it's a very, uh, it's a very nice, uh, relatively clean uh, system that should be amenable for uh, open source development. Um, but uh, this is the actual code base. Uh, when you get to it, uh, we, we have all the actual working code on the development branch. So you need to go to the development. Uh, and you can see sort of a very quick look. The design of this is it's a, it's a set of microservices that are uh, uh, focused on specific activities that we identified that could be basically, uh, you know, turned in a microservice. Uh, so we have activation services, we have admin services, we have uh, content uh, delivery, and um, they can all be uh, individually uh, launched. Um, and uh, the design itself, they're even designed internally so that you can see there's uh, every single one of these will have a microservice they'll have a core and the api uh, the core is uh, what you can actually just pull the functionality out of the spring boot application for each one of these microservices and put it drop it in as a library uh, into into your own code uh, you can also use the api uh, to actually start using it to uh, communicate uh, through the api system with any one of the different microservices. So the API, so like if I wanted to work with delivery, there's a set of APIs that are available. I would pull that into my, uh, that, that library into my uh, code base. And then uh, we actually have uh, a fairly, uh, I think it's a fairly clean design for clients. And you could just pull in uh, the, uh, let's see, where is that? I think that's the common API has the uh, clients. And you can just uh, start talking to the microservices with that API and the pulling in the clients. 
and you're um, and you're basically ready to go uh, to actually start communicating and interacting uh, outside of the uh, outside of our system with theirs as long as you have uh, the ability is to um, uh, actually authenticate, of course. Um, so I think we're right at time. I, I you know, it, it, that's pretty much all. I was going to talk a little bit more about the architecture, but uh, hopefully you get an idea. Uh, it's it's uh, Java 11. Uh, it's 2.2, I think, uh, for Spring Boot, uh, and um, it's uh, you know, it's it's really it's ready to go. And I'll stop my share right there. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. If I can just, if I can just share the la one last screen here. Um, okay. So, uh, really appreciate you all joining us today. From a from a next step perspective, um, as Jim mentioned, the Tesudo code has been checked into the GitHub repository. We are actively seeking seeking incubation partners and uh, hoping to, to get a, gather a list of interested parties and schedule some kickoff meetings with partner organizations. Um, here are contact information for folks. Um, this is for, for Jim and I. And so we'll make sure that we get this, uh, this uploaded to, uh, to, the, uh, to the site. So you, everybody has access to the deck, decks and our contact information. Uh, let's say there's a question. Is it available in different languages or is there a possibility to translate that? Jim, do you remember that? I, I thought we had done some work on that, but is it? Have we done any globalization work? Definitely set up for translation. It's yeah. set up to be globalized, but um, uh, we haven't, you know, we haven't paid. Obviously, uh, where the, the project was at, we hadn't got to the point, but there was an expectation uh, and certainly uh, a requirement, I think, that Spanish be part of it. So um, we were definitely looking at that, that ability to do it. So, and uh, it didn't get mentioned in this, uh, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's possible to do that. Um, and that, that wasn't something that we had, we had tested out as part of uh, our initial um, testing and development, but I, 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 I do recall that that was part of uh, part of what we had built was the ability to support that. Yeah. Well, I know it's uh, we're a little bit past time. I really, really, genuinely appreciate you all joining us today. Uh, I'm going to hang out here for uh, for a few more minutes. If anybody has any questions or would like to have uh, like to discuss anything, please uh, please feel free to to, to hang back and, and visit. Um, and uh, I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your Aperio conference. I don't think, I think we may have lost Jolie. Um, Jolie dropped off, but I'm here if you okay. need anything as the replacement moderator. Thanks, Gavin. That's great. What is the GitHub, GitHub link to the project? Um, let me see, I, I, I think I can post that. Do you want me to put it in the chat? Yeah, if you don't mind, Jim, that'd be great. Okay. Does anybody, does anybody have any, any questions, thoughts, interests, concerns? <laughs> like um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Louisa. Hi, Louisa. Hi, I missed the first half, unfortunately, okay. but it's a bit late where I am. Um, I just wanted to ask if it is possible to use it in conjunction with the LMS, um, for instance, if you don't want to use the test and quizzing tool in the LMS and actually just push students through to, to the software to take the assessments. Okay, so uh, it would take a little bit of design work. It's all set up to be usable in that way. Uh, you know, it's all API based. Uh, everything's, uh, you know, you can uh, talk both ways uh, with it. Uh, we would really probably need to 
get an LTI 1.3 and have it uh, be able to integrate that way so that it can actually be inside of the of the thing. And there, there would be some design work. It's certainly not off the shelf ready to go into a, an LMS or to be in communication necessarily with an LMS. Yeah, but but it should be, it would be something that they could be done in probably three to three months or so, or less maybe even if we. Yeah, okay, cool. Ahead. Yeah. I'm just asking, I've used the commercial product Swift Assess in production before and it was really nifty in that you could manage your assessments in the assessment system across courses and across years so it basically keeps your statistics and and quizzing yeah quizzing statistics and background as a permanent storage which lms can't really do for you and yeah, but those products are really expensive and this seems like it could possibly grow into that space from an open source point of view, which will be very exciting to see. Yeah, we definitely have the ability to, to maintain uh, all the assessment information for each of the assessments as, as, as uh, a person goes through the system. Uh, and, and, and we have incorporated the rules engine as a rules engine uh, and uh, that's something that potentially is, you know, from a geek standpoint, is uh, pretty exciting to take a look at how to uh, do uh, more analysis of a person's assessments as they go through the, uh, the educational process um, and, and determine again uh, where they are in the system. So, yeah, we, that all, all that type of stuff is, is something that I believe was, was of interest as part of the design. Right. Lisa, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my my email address and my and my phone number in the chat. If you if you want to have any additional conversation with Jim or I about this, we're happy to uh, happy to jump on a call with you at some point. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any other questions or thoughts? I'm gonna go ahead and close out the recording. We're just about seven minutes over the time, which is fine because I don't think this room is being used afterwards, but you're welcome to hang out if you want to, if you have additional questions. Thank you so much for your participation today. Absolutely, thank you. It, uh, well, I, I, I will definitely hang, I'm definitely available to hang out for a few more minutes if, uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to visit uh, in any more detail. Okay, good enough.